Hi everyone, welcome back to Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. My name is Stacy. Now, last night I decided I wanted to try to make my own chalk paint. I had been seeing some recipes on Pinterest and it just so happened I was out of some paint that I needed and I thought, well, let's give it a try. So I looked on Pinterest and found some recipes and found one that I could get all the ingredients locally for and not have to order anything so I could get it done last night. So the recipe I decided to go with was the Plaster of Paris. Now I got this four pound Plaster of Paris for about $4 at Walmart. It's in the paint aisle where you find all the drywall spackle and that kind of thing. Okay, and then I needed a bottle of paint and I just used the two ounce antique white. Now the recipes call for latex paint, but latex paint is a little more expensive, but if you have uh, like remnants of a can around you could totally use that as long as it's latex and it doesn't matter what gloss it is but they had some on clearance but the cheapest one they had was a quart for eight dollars and something like or no I don't know it was more expensive this only cost me 92 cents so I decided to go ahead and go with this um, acrylic paint rather than with the latex paint. I do want to try it with the latex paint. I need to go rummage around in the garage and see if there's any colors I can use, but I really needed some antique white or off-white and I didn't have any, so that's what I decided to make. And I also decided to make a black, and I'm going to show you something with the black here in just a minute. So I made using antique white. Now this is, I have two of the same sign. They were both primered with black primer after sanding off all of the glitter and whatnot. These are signs from the Dollar Tree. They had mug handles on them and a straw and I cut the, that off. So I just wanted to show you the difference. Now this cost me 92 cents plus I don't know 10 cents for the plaster of Paris because I only used a little tiny bit like half a tablespoon <laughs> and so I'm going to be able to make a lot of batches out of that. So this cost about a dollar. This cost a dollar sixty seven. It's the Waverly in Ivory from Walmart. This was a dollar sixty seven but I'm only getting two ounces out of here. Here I'm getting like half a cup, three quarters of a cup. So I'm getting twice as much for a little more than half the cost. So this is a good deal because in my opinion they are pretty much exactly the same. They feel the same, they have the same texture, they have the same coverage. This is one coat of both. They have the same coverage. You can still see the brush strokes in either one but they sand it up exactly the same. So if I'm if I just need a little tiny bit I might just go ahead and make this. But since I needed to buy this stuff because I wanted to make more than one color, um, this totally worked for me. And I do want to go and find some latex paint and try it and see if this, if I can get one coat coverage with actual latex paint instead of acrylic. I just need to find some. So that is that. My recipe was this. One quarter cup of paint, which is one bottle. Okay. Uh, it's actually just a little bit shy of a quarter cup of paint. So if I'd had a little more of this, I think I would have got better color on the homemade one. So a quarter cup of paint to a half of a tablespoon, not a teaspoon, a half a tablespoon. And I just happen to have a half a tablespoon measure. It's from Farberware. I got it at Walmart. Um, came in a set of all different colored spoons. And then a half a tablespoon of water, one of these. I actually used three. Okay, I wanted it a little bit thinner and if I had left it thicker, maybe only put two spoons of water instead of three, I might have got better coverage. But I just, I wanted it to be nice and smooth and I was trying to get it to be the same smoothness as the store bought and so that's why I added more water. So you can add less water if you want it thicker and I think in my next batch I will do that. Okay, so with that being said, I like them both equally but I like the homemade because it's cheaper. All right let me show you another purpose for this. Another thing I wanted to try my own paint for is covering up stuff. 
Now, if you buy signs from the Dollar Tree, you know how hard it is sometimes to get the glitter off and to get it smooth and looking nice. So what I did is I took these two signs and I uh, scraped off the glitter, peeled off the little glued on attachments and some of the paper peeled off and that's what this dark spot is and this dark spot up here and the same with this dark spot and this dark spot. Now I accidentally when I mixed my own I grabbed a color called pavement instead of black on accident and so this is a little more gray and this is a little more white. For this purpose this was done with the uh, Waverly chalk paint in color ink. Okay, this is one coat. This is one coat of the homemade. Okay, you can still see the word summer on both of them, but I think I got, I think where it had to soak in to the paper that was torn, that the homemade version actually did a little bit better. Now, I wanted to try one more thing. Now, on my black one, I only used two spoonfuls of water. So I used a quarter cup of paint or well, one two ounce bottle of paint. I used a half a tablespoon of plaster and a tablespoon of water and I mixed it all up together. Now when you mix this, make sure you mix the water and the plaster together first because it just, it comes out a lot smoother. This came out a lot smoother, a lot quicker than my ivory colored one. In the ivory colored one I mixed everything in all at once. But this one I decided to try mixing the plaster with the water first and I got a much better result. So make sure you do that. I didn't get it mixed very well because there's a hardened piece of plaster right there. So what I wanted to do, part of what I wanted to make my own was to see if I could get a better job of coverage for these uh, back. See how horrible that looks? This is just with a coat of primer on it. But this had a lemon right here because it was a bottle, it was a jug of lemonade. And when I peeled that off, it just, the paper just tore. And as I tried to sand it away, it kept tearing even more. So I have this big swatch where the paper isn't smooth, but it did take the lettering off. <laughs> so what I wanted to try was adding one more tablespoon of the plaster to the paint. Now I'm not going to level this, I'm going to leave it a little bit rounded and I'm just going to add it into the paint that I've already mixed with that other recipe. I figured, well, if I mess it up, I'm only out a dollar. So I'm adding, I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this over here. This is kind of messy, so make sure that you protect your surface. Okay, you gotta stir, once you, if you add the plaster in with the paint, it takes a little bit to get the lumps out. It seems to work better if you mix the plaster and the water first. So I'm just aiming for this to be thicker. And I'm just using a popsicle stick to stir with. That's my favorite stirring tool. All right. Now that it's got more plaster in it, I'm wondering if it will cover these rough spots a little better. I'm still seeing a difference while it's wet, but when it dries, that will be the real test. It does seem a little grainier. It's not as smooth, but we'll see. It might take two coats to make a nice job of it. Um, I always like to paint the back sides of my signs either black or white just so that they look finished. I often sell the things that I make on my YouTube channel. I often sell them in my craft booth at the farmer's market. So I don't like to sell things that are yucky looking on the back. Oh, uh, one thing I can say about this homemade stuff, it's easier to get your brush strokes out and to get it level. Okay. So that's done. I'm going to let it dry and for about an hour and then I will come back and we'll see how it did once it's dry. These things always change texture when they dry up so it'll be interesting to see. So this one coat of paint has dried. Um, 
it's not really covering as much as I would like it to. So I'm just kind of experimenting and trying to find that sweet spot where I can get the texture and the coverage that I want without having to destroy the piece that was already there. So I'm going to add in another half a tablespoon. So now I'm up to a tablespoon and a half of plaster. Now this is starting to get thick. So I'm hoping that I find that sweet spot and I can get the texture that I want and get a little bit better coverage. Now I don't think I would add the extra paint or extra plaster if I was using this for the front, but this is just a jar of paint I'm using on the back of my signs to cover up all that ugliness. And since it only costs a dollar to make, I can afford to have an extra jar of paint around that's just for that purpose. Okay, here's a trick if you're in between coats, cover your paintbrush with wax paper and seal it in, and it's not going to dry out on you. Oh, this is much thicker. Much, much thicker. It's still going on smooth but I can see that there is a grittiness to it. It's not as smooth as the store-bought, but it's thicker. <laughs> okay, I have to say I am extremely happy with this. I don't know if you can see how well that covered, but I cannot see the summer that was on here before at all. And I can barely see the spots that were torn from the paper where I took off those pieces. So I am very happy with this. It is rough. Okay, It's not something you would want to use as regular, like a chalkboard. But for the back of a sign, it's perfect. I'm really thrilled with this. And it costs a lot less. It costs about half to make my own, plus I was able to thicken it up the way I wanted it for the use I needed it to be for. All right, friends, here is the recipe that I used. For the ivory colored chalk paint that is smooth and is just like the Waverly chalk paint that you buy at Walmart, you need two ounces of acrylic paint, or you could use latex. I used acrylic, I want to try latex. I use the Apple Barrel brand, the cheapest stuff you can get. 92 cents a bottle. A two ounce bottle of the paint, you're going to use the whole thing. One half tablespoon of plaster of Paris, you find this in the hardware section uh, near the paint where all of the drywall spackle is and drywall mud and that kind of stuff. Okay, so you need half a tablespoon of that. Get yourself a measuring spoon that you're going to dedicate to the craft room because you don't want to be mixing food with a spoon that you've used in a chemical. Okay, so get yourself a spoon for that. And then I used a one and a half tablespoons of water, and I just mixed all of that in one of these little jelly jars. It, I don't know, half pint? No, not half pint. I don't know what you call this, how many ounces this is. Uh, probably four, maybe eight, but it makes a whole jar full, one recipe. Okay, so that is the, the, smooth one just like the Waverly paint. Okay, For the extra thick that I did the black that to cover the texture on the back of my sign, I used two ounces of acrylic paint. Again, just the apple barrel. You can use any color you want for these things. Two ounces of acrylic paint, one and a half tablespoons of plaster of Paris, so three scoops, and then just one tablespoon of water. And when you mix this up, you want to make sure you mix the plaster of Paris with the water until it's smooth. And I just use a popsicle stick, okay? Make sure you get around the edges and get all that uh, powder stirred in. Then stir in the paint and just store it in an airtight container. Now, I got, I had the jars on my shelf and I just went and got the one piece plastic lids from Walmart. I think they're like $4 and you get a dozen of them, maybe 10. But um, one piece jars are just, or jar lids are just easier to store paint with and it's plastic so it's not going to corrode. So I've got the glass which isn't going to corrode and I've got a plastic lid which isn't going to corrode. I don't know what the plaster of Paris would do when it reacts with the metal of a regular canning lid. So I just had those, that's what I wanted to use. So this is the recipe, the two recipes I used for the two things that I showed you. 
how to make your own chalk paint for about half the price of what you get it for at Walmart. These are the two recipes I used and I think they turned out really well. Okay, this has been Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time.